Tom here again from the Fabcon 3D and Rapid Tech 2016 in Erfurt, and I'm here at the Syntratech booth with uh, Dominic. So thanks for having me. So Dominic, first question: um, What are your machines, and you know, what are your goals for for them, and, and how should you be using them? All right. So we've got two machines, and one is a kit, the Syntratech kit, and our goal um, with the kit is to uh, enable everyone out there to get to know the laser sensing technology. And the other machine we have is the S1. It's actually just coming to market now. And with this machine, our goal is to, to enable professional customers, small and medium-sized businesses, to uh, finally be able to employ uh, laser sintering on their side uh, for, with a, a cost-effective perspective, you know. So far, you really had to have, to have a, a really big budget. And now, hopefully, we can solve this problem. So why should people use a sintering-based process in general over a filament-based one? All right, so we are, of course, a little bit biased <laughs> since we... <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Um, but we really believe that uh, laser sintering adds so much more to the capability to 3D printing than just filament. So each, uh, each technology has its applications, um, FDM filament, uh, of course, as well. Uh, but we actually started with laser sintering since we were a little bit let down with what, uh, what low-cost FDM printers uh, were able to, to uh, what, the kind of the quality uh, they put out. So with laser sintering, you can make parts that are really, really, really dense and hard. So it's perfect for kind of mechanical applications. It's not so much important to look at them, um, but you can really use it in functional applications. Uh, the resolution is better, and uh, you also have temperature stability, uh, which is nice. Other cool stuff is you can have kind of different materials, fully flexible ones you wouldn't be able to get. This together with a complete freedom of form, so whatever you can imagine you can actually print, don't have to worry anything about support structures, really brings opens up yeah, a new world uh, of applications you can do. So you originally started out as an Indiegogo campaign and I gotta say hats off for actually delivering all the machines and delivering them on time. That's, that's rare to see. <laughs> so would you say the, the Kickstarter or crowdfunding approach has actually influenced your, your development process for the machine? Yeah, it has. So uh, we wanted to do a crowdfunding campaign from the beginning, but we didn't know what we actually were getting us into. Uh, we got feedback really, really early um, on, uh, before, even before the, the crowdfunding campaign. And with the campaign, we were able to, to present our, our pitch practically to the world. Since we got feedback um, early on, we actually uh, kind of knew now what to focus more in development for our next machine, also in terms of updates we've made between the, the campaign and then the shipment. When we were shooting, we already had a pre-production prototype. Uh, otherwise, um, we would have missed the deadline completely. We made realistic calculations um, to be able to ship. Um, but in this time, there were our, uh, with with uh, with doing the production, there were a whole world of new problems. So, uh, yeah, really recommend that you have a, <laughs> a good a, a good prototype when you start out. <laughs> so, in this entire development process, what would you say has been your, your biggest challenge to overcome? Well, we uh, we did um, some filament printers before we started with with laser sintering ourselves, and. Uh, there we could could use some open source software and and build our solution, um, but with with laser sintering there was nothing we could use, so we've had to build the whole tool chain, um, desktop software, placing, uh, and then all the algorithms which uh, yeah, process the part, and then all the control systems before even getting some usable results. So. Uh, in setting up this whole tool chain was really hard, and then the process itself is uh, really, really hard for us as uh, as engineer to control. Um, lots of, of of heat management and, and thermodynamics you you need to master. So, uh, from a technical kind uh, of perspective, it was at least for us it was a, a, a quite the challenge. Yeah. It's all never before seen uh, technology, at least on, on this price point. So you're just now releasing your new machine, the, the S1. So what has improved? And you know, these machines are currently still printing with nylon powder. Do we maybe even have a, a metal sintering machine coming up in the future? Okay, so 
what has improved and uh, we'll be able to print metal. So first of all, improvements um, over the Sintratech kit are mostly kind of uh, uh, looking from a, a customer perspective. We got a lot of feedback from professionals, uh, businesses who wanted to, to use uh, the technology, but they have kind of different uh, expectations. Yeah, they would like to have uh, support, which, which they want to pay for, but the machine itself has to be designed, that it can be uh, serviced easily and, and maintained and, and keep up production, um, because they, of course, uh, rely on it for their own products. So it's just, uh, it's professionalized more. Um, the components are all ex more expensive, which we don't have the budget for in the kit. Um, so it, it leads to a, a better result in the end, but the base technology is completely the same. So both do laser sintering. So to, to come back to the metal question, do you have anything planned for that? Or would it even be possible to modify your current machines to accept metal as a, you know, as a material? <laughs> sure. So basically the, the principle is the same for laser sintering with polymers and with metal. So both uh, use powder. Uh, that are applied layer by layer and then use laser to selectively sinter or melt um, a pool uh, and then this goes on and on and on. Apart from this same concept, the machines are actually very, very different. We wouldn't recommend to, <laughs> to uh, try to do metal with a, 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 a polymer machine. It's about, it's about laser power, it's about laser wavelength, it's also about uh, lots of components. You need to have lots of security features when you use metal, since metal um, yeah, it can be dangerous without those security features. What is possible though uh, is to use a mix between polymer and metal. And uh, we're working on this. So. Sounds good. All right, so thank you, Dominic, for this quick introduction on, on what you're doing uh, with the Sintratec machines. And yeah, I'm pretty much signing off for Fabcon and Repitech for this year. Thanks for watching. Also, check out the other videos. You can all find them linked below. <laughs>